Hello guys, it's me, I'm GamerGod69, showing you 7 totally legitimate tips and tricks to increase your win rate in Identity 5. These are all scientific tips based on pro gameplay analysis, meta observation, and research. So, if you're a noob trying to learn the game or a seasoned veteran who wants to improve your playstyle, then you've come to the right place. This is not a joke, this is totally real, let's go. Number 1. Pick a survivor you're not good at. Identity 5 is not just a game, it's a learning experience. So when you go and queue up for a ranked game, pick a survivor you're not good at. This way, you would quickly learn the ropes of the survivors you wish to master, and your teammates will never flame you for it. You won't ruin the entire ranked experience for everyone, trust me. It's not like there's an entire game mode dedicated for you to learn survivors you're not good at, right? Number 2. Don't use any personas. Ever notice how, when you go to an Identity 5 subreddit, there's always going to be that one guy who asks, Yo, what persona do you use for this specific character? And scroll even deeper and you'll see people actually saying fancy jargons like Tide Turner, Broken Windows, Borrowed... T what the hell are those, okay? See, they're all wrong. You should never use personas in Identity 5, ever. This way, you can have the purest experience of what your character is supposed to do. No fancy bells and whistles, no nothing. It's not like personas give you a lot of passive advantages, right? Number 3. Crows are your friends. When you spawn in a game, there's this really interesting mechanic where if you don't move for a specific amount of time, crows will appear right above your head. Fret not though, as intimidating as they might seem, they're actually really friendly crows. I mean, they don't attack you, they just play in circle around you. Think of yourself as a dirty, ragdoll Disney princess who could talk to animals and come on, who doesn't want to be a Disney princess, huh? If you go ahead and decode a cipher machine, they'll go away. And you don't want that. You don't want to scare your new friends away, right? That's mean. It's not like the crows give away your location, right? Number 4. Don't rescue other survivors. Okay, this might sound a little controversial, but in this cold, indifferent world, it's hunt or be hunted. And if your fellow survivors were dumb enough to get shared, then pfft, that's not your problem. Just look at them from a safe distance, spam your emotes, and watch as they slowly get blasted off of the face of the earth. That way, you won't get yourself hurt desperately trying to rescue them and they get to enjoy a ride of a lifetime. It's a win-win. It's not like this game is all about teamwork, right? Number 5. Show your love for the hunters. See, we all think that hunters are mean-spirited, scary monsters who want nothing but to butcher you like the nasty pig that you are. Maybe we're wrong about them. Maybe they're not evil creatures. Maybe they're just misunderstood. So when you spawn in a game, Try locating the hunter as soon as possible, and when you do, ask them out on a date. That way, you're showing that you're not scared of them and that you accept them for who they really are. Get a cup of joe from the nearest coffee shop, ask about how they are and how life has been treating them so far, the works. Maybe by doing this, you'll discover a different, more humane part of being a hunter. It's not like the people who play hunters are degenerates, right? Number 6. Say thank you. In games like Identity 5, communication with your team is highly crucial to win games. I mean, this is a 4 versus 1, so info gathering and info sharing is what gives you an inherent advantage over the hunter. And what's the best way to communicate but by saying how much your teammates mean to you? You see a teammate get shared 30 seconds into the game? Say thank you. You get shared 30 seconds into the game and no one from your team wants to rescue you? Show them your gratitude. The only time you don't say thank you is when your team is not doing anything wrong. I promise you, spamming thank you boosts the overall morale of the entire team and your teammates will love you for it. It's not like saying thank you is considered passive aggressive, right? Number 7. Subscribe to my channel. 
Elon Musk says that he found a direct relationship between intelligence and my channel. His research shows that the people who are subscribed to me have higher general weighted IQ than the people who are not subscribed to me. Here's a totally legit graph that shows you the data. See? I have a graph, so it must be true, right? That That's science. That's it. Those are seven totally not sarcastic tips and tricks that you could use the next time you queue up for a game. Subscribe for more useful facts to GamerGod69. Bye!